fur has been in style since prehistoric times. Talk about a fashion original. In those early days, fur garments were pretty basic. Their main purpose was to keep people warm, a primary need. These days, fur is often a fashion choice, but it still provides old-fashioned warmth. At the tanning plant, a worker sorts through raw beaver pelts purchased at auction. He inspects the quality of the hair, then determines the type of garment they're suitable for. He hammers a lot number into the underside of the pelt. It perforates the skin. This technique is used so that the number stays on the pelt during processing. Using a pneumatic punch, he cuts out the ear cartilage. It's a crucial step. They need to get rid of the cartilage early on so the pelts can go through certain machines during tanning. The pelts are a bit dried out because of preservation techniques used before they were delivered to the tanning plant. To rehydrate them, they put them through various chemical washes. The final bath contains tanning chemicals. They convert the underside of the animal's skins to leather. The supple leather texture will allow the pelts to eventually be shaped into garments. Between each wash, the furs go into a wringer. It spins out the excess liquid. moisture has caused the pelt to thicken, so they thin it down with a spinning blade called a flesher's knife. You need to be an expert to wield this tool. One false move and you'll cut into the follicles and lose fur. Next, a worker shovels sawdust into a big drum. He gathers up the pelts and places them in the drum along with the sawdust and adds a mineral solution. The drum turns, tossing it all for about half an hour. This cleans and conditions the leather side of the pelts. The furs emerge still damp, so they hang them to dry over wooden dowels, leather side up. The rest of the sawdust will fall away in subsequent operations. Now, a worker scrapes off the pelt's long hair to expose the downy undercoat. This undercoat has a more desirable look and texture. He rubs a generous amount of oil into the leather of the pelt to lubricate it. Then he tosses the pelts into a kicker box, so named for the automated kickers. The kicking action causes the oils to penetrate the skin. Next, a spinning metal wheel tugs at the pelt to stretch it. cuts away the ragged edges and it's into the hot press. This irons and adds luster to the fur. After a quick brush, the pelts get one more press. Then a shearing machine cuts the hairs to an even length. Finally, they bundle up the pelts for a trip to the garment factory where there'll be great design material. <laughs>